into our CBS Sports studios, Haley Sutton and Brady Quinn. Brady, I know it's Christmas today, but I think the bigger thing is that it was also Nick Miss. That's right. Happening for our football game, Nickelodeon taking over the Chiefs and the Raiders game today. And I love the Nick Miss game because of the slime and all of yeah. the special effects. You've watched it before? I have, of course. Big <laughs> fan of it. Uh, the problem with this game, though, is there wasn't as much slime as they thought there were going to be. Know. Especially from the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Let's get to the highlights because this one certainly didn't go how we expected it to. Raiders traveling to the Chiefs, kicking off the Christmas Day slate and the Nickmas game on Nickelodeon and, of course, on CBS. The Chiefs could have clinched their eighth straight AFC West title with a win. And Patrick Mahomes was 10-1 and in his career against the Raiders. So we'll pick this one up in the second quarter. A little bit of a miscue there on the handoff, Brady. It ends up in points for the Raiders. Some of the creativity that Chiefs have tried to implement to spark their offense, unfortunately, in this case, it backfired against them. And a defensive touchdown for the Raiders in the slime time. The slime rolls on. You thought it would get better until it didn't. Patrick Mahomes throwing the pick. It ends up in six points for Jack Jones, who had a little bulletin board material earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah playing the Grinch on Christmas Day for Patrick Mahomes here with the pick six and staring down Mahomes as it goes into the end zone. But this is the story of the day, the mistakes and the frustration you can see on Patrick Mahomes' face and with this offense and ultimately ended up being their, their demise. Yeah, that was the Raiders' fourth defensive touchdown in their last two games. You see Travis Kelsey there frustrated. He threw his helmet on the side line so then in the second half they would try to make a comeback with Patrick Mahomes midway through the third he finds Rishi Rice on the fourth down but Travis Kelsey called for pass interference Brady yeah, and this again trying to little, get a little pick on the defender clearly impeded the defender's ability to cover that's a good call Chiefs still trailing. They would cut the deficit or at least try there. Mahomes trying to find Rishi Rice again, but it's broken up by Nate Hobbs. Another great defensive effort from that Raiders side. They finally get something going, though, when Mahomes hits Justin Watson after avoiding the sack, Brady. So the Raiders still up 20-14. to 14. Yeah, with a last chance and opportunity, but then comes the Raiders rushing attack, the physicality, the attitude that we saw from this Raiders offense all game long. Yeah, look at that. Zamir White bouncing through defenders, taking it the distance almost. A great field position there for the Raiders, who would then capitalize once again that run defense, or that run offense, rather, looking strong. Uh, what did you think about the Raiders' run game in this one? Well, it had to carry him. I uh, didn't you know Connell didn't complete a pass since the first quarter. It's 0 for 10 to finish the game, so it was all Zamir White, this defense for the Raiders. Yeah, so the Chiefs lose this one 20 to 14, still waiting to clinch that AFC West. They could do it next week with a win or a tie. And Vegas still in the playoff conversation here. They can technically still win the division as well by winning out and the Chiefs losing out. Meanwhile, for Patrick Mahomes, that was his first loss against a rookie. He was previously 8-0, and so a lot of things to fix on that Chiefs side of the ball. Let's hear from Tracy Wolfson after the game. Merry Christmas. What a great pres Christmas present this yeah. was for you. And you told us coming into this game, enough is enough. How were you guys, your defense, able to come here on the road and win this one today? Hell of a job by those guys. Our staff, Patrick Graham. It's tough. I know the emotions. I can see it right now in your face. I can tell in your voice. Describe those emotions and what it means to you. Yeah, that's what we wanted. We said enough is enough. Guys came. We said we had a squeeze. It's going to take all 60 minutes. It did. Hell of a job on offense to finish it. You grew up a Raiders fan. Yeah. I know how bad you want the permanent job for the Las Vegas Raiders. What yeah. do you think you showed today? You know, I think our team told, showed that you know we can go play on the road and do a hell of a job. Defense, offense is a team effort. Hell of a job by us. My spot will take care of itself. Go enjoy this okay. one. Merry Christmas. An incredibly emotional Antonio Pierce. What a Christmas gift he has given this Raiders fan base since taking over. You're looking at the Raiders defense under Pierce against the former head coach, Josh McDaniels. You can see the difference there. The win-loss total, the first thing that stands out, but that second row, Brady, points per game has dropped drastically for this Raiders defense. They have been so impressive. Yeah, and two, uh, an additional takeover per game or takeaway per game, which is obviously huge, too, in helping them turn things around around and have a winning record since Pierce has taken over. One of the guys who was up in the booth calling this game a very festive Tony Romo joining us in his CBS Sports Christmas sweater. <laughs> and Tony, it was a holly jolly Christmas if you're a Raiders fan. Uh, just your thoughts on this game and how everything played out. 
Uh, it definitely was. I feel like the energy of the Raiders coming in, you would not expect a team who is really, you know, at the end of the year, sometimes you're ready to finish the season and get ready for next year. And they still believed. And they came out here, and they really took it to the Chiefs. They were very physical and very disciplined. And I think that that was the difference in the game, was just the physicality and how they took it to the Chiefs on both the offense and defensive lines. Yeah, I want to continue the conversation about the Raiders because just a week ago they put up a franchise best 63 against the Chargers. Then today they come out, they force key turnovers, all of this with an interim coach and a rookie quarterback behind center. I mean, how much fun are the Raiders playing right now behind Antonio Pierce? Well, I think they're showing, you know, his personality and the way he played it. He was aggressive but disciplined, very smart. He knew the subtlety of the game and the nuance, and I think this team, they are flying around. And, I mean, defensively, uh, when they see it, they attack, and they trust their rules, and they know where their help is on defense. And I just think that they're a very difficult team to go against right now because these edge rushers, you know, everyone knows about Max Crosby, who's amazing, and then Koontz has come on. It just makes things where the back end can just flow downhill very fast and they trust each other and play complimentary football on the other side of that we've seen a frustrated Patrick Mahomes over the last couple of weeks a lot of that frustration growing even more today because this Chiefs offense is just not what we've been used to seeing what's going wrong and if you're Andy Reid what adjustments are you making this week in practice it's difficult because Patrick has such unique gifts to be able to um, extend plays and create for other people but I'm seeing signs right now where we need to take a little bit off his plate and part of me thinks we need to block it up a little more a little more play action from under center and get it a two-way go because just the drop back game which they've been incredible for so many years I mean, they're great in screen game and all the new unique stuff but I just think they got to make the game a little simpler and protect these tackles because right now they're getting beat on the edges and making life really tough on Patrick Mahomes to just turn into Superman over and over again. Yeah, we've seen him be that Superman, but today was just not his day. Tony Romo from Up in the Booth, we love your sweater. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. A reminder, you can always catch Tony and Jim Nance in the booth alongside Tracy Wolfson on the sideline with the NFL on CBS and, of course, streaming on on Paramount Plus. Make sure you keep it locked in as the NFL season comes to a close. And we want to welcome you into our CBS Sports Studios. Haley Sutton alongside Brady Quinn. Brady, what a turn of events for that game going into that one. I think everyone kind of expected the Chiefs to clinch their division, and now on the other side of that, it's the Raiders playing spoiler on Christmas. Yeah, I mean, coming into this thing, obviously Antonio Pierce has done such a good job with the Raiders, building up some momentum, getting this group to believe and, and play a certain brand of football. And you just heard Tony Romo talk about it a moment ago. You know, Antonio Pierce has put his stamp on this team. This is a team that plays with physicality, with attitude. They're a smart football team. And really, the defense dominated this game. If you look at Aiden O'Connell, the final three quarters, he was 0 for 10, along with a few kneel downs. So this was really a, a, a game that was dominated by the defensive performance, in particular those defensive turnovers that turned into touchdowns, and they're really the ground game. Zamir White, who took over, give credit to the offensive line, uh, Bo Hardegree as well, the play caller there, but this team is playing with a sense of belief and I think an attitude, and if, if you're asking me right now, Mark Davis, don't think about this anymore, all right? You messed up when you didn't hire Rich Passaccia. <laughs> it's led to this point now. Go ahead and take that interim turn off of Antonio Pierce's title. Make him the head coach. Same with Champ Kelly, too, their general manager uh, take the titles away these guys need to be the, the front office the coaching staff moving forward yeah and it's been so fun as we now welcome in our guy Lee J Duzable to the party it's been so fun to see just these guys not only rallying around him on the field uh, but in the locker room as well so I want to share a quote with you guys from uh, the Raiders quarterback Jack Jones from earlier in the week this is him talking about Patrick Mahomes and the offensive weapon that the Chiefs have he said quote let me see if I can find it here. Here we go. Quote, we're not worried about them, referring to the wide receivers and the skill players on the Chiefs offense. It's Patrick Mahomes we've got to stop, the magician. You've got to stop the magician. The act is over. So, Lige, you're new to the party, joining in. When you hear the cornerback who got that pick six today saying that it's not the other guys, it's Patrick Mahomes, I mean, is he right? 
He's 100% right. And the thing about Jack Jones, right, he has a really good relationship with Antonio Pierce. He actually coached him in high school, so he knows him really well. I think he's brought a grittiness to this team coming in at the quarterback position when he uh, got released from New England. And just Antonio Pierce by himself has brought a grittiness and, and tenacity to this team. And you see it out there on the field, right? You heard Tony Romo kind of allude to it about Jack Jones maybe poking at the bear. But this Raider team doesn't care about Patrick Mahomes out there, right? And, and, and Brady, you can speak to this. Like, we're not worried about poking the bear, right? We have our own mentality. We want to come into your, your living room, sit on your couch, eat your food on Christmas Day. And that's exactly what the Raiders did. I mean, you heard Tony Romo talk about it. Everybody talks about Max, uh, Max Cross. Cosby, right? But Kuntz on the other side has really come of age these last few weeks. Three sacks today, right? So that's what Max Crosby needed. He needed somebody on the other side to take some of the pressure off of him. And I think Jack Jones getting him in the secondary, a physical corner that's aggressive at the line of scrimmage and aggressive attacking the football. We saw his one-hand interception last week versus the Chargers. Now you saw him today also jumping out route and get an interception. I just love the mentality of this Raiders team. And I'm like you, Brady, like Mark Davis, don't mess around with this, right? You messed up with Rich Basaccia. You let him go. He was a true leader of men. We know Antonio Pierce is a true leader of men because most teams at this juncture in the season, if they don't have a real chance to make it to the playoffs, they usually fall by the wayside. But this Raider team still believes because they're mathematically still in it. And you can tell that they've taken on the mantra of their head coach. So make him the head coach of the future for the Raiders. Not many teams walk into Arrowhead, all right, and physically dominate the Kansas City Chiefs and out-scheme them in some ways, too like Antonio Pierce's right. staff and team did today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really impressive, like I said, from start to finish. And so when you look at this Chiefs team, because, Lige, you mentioned it, the Raiders, a really, really outside chance of making the postseason. Right. But the Chiefs, about a 90% shot still with this loss. They're still probably going to clinch the division uh, next week if they can get past the Bengals. But if you're mm. Andy Reid, Brady, what adjustments are you making with this team to get the offense back to kind of what we're used to seeing? Uh, you're not going to get the offense back to what we're used to seeing. I mean, the bottom line is, Every single uh, piece of this offense, if you're looking at the running game, it's inconsistent. Obviously, Isaiah Pacheco getting knocked out of the game, but even then, Clyde's Edward, Edwards Hilaire had a little bit of a spark, but really just not, not, not enough. This offensive line plays too high. The tackles are constantly getting beat or are giving up penetration, and so it makes life more difficult for Patrick Mahomes. He's got to play Superman out there where he's scrambling around, but I even think Patrick Mahomes needs to hold himself accountable with the way he's playing. Too often times, he's looking for the big bigger play downfield, trying to scramble on, just not playing within the system, especially in the drop back game. There's plays to be made, throws to be made, but instead, he's waiting for that bigger play to open up downfield. It's just not there. And I know this wide receiver group has had a ton of drops this uh, this year. That's, that's not been the case for this particular game. He looked a little bit off early on. They went to some creativity, too, within this offense. That sparked at least a touchdown, but you also saw the downside of that with the fumbled exchange that led to a touchdown, and they just can't can't get anything going right now. So the bottom line is there's no fixing it at this point. No one's going to come in and save yeah. the day. They've got to look within inside them, themselves. It really starts with Patrick Mahomes, too, doing a better job of playing within the system and getting that ball out of his hand. He's dealt with these tackles in the situation on the offensive line, Leger, the entire year. That's not yeah. going to improve. For them to get better, he's got to get better and playing a different style of football than I think what he'd like to play. Yeah, Brady, there's so much to decipher when you look at this Chiefs offense because you alluded to it perfectly, right? There was times in the game where Patrick Mahomes is back there burping the baby, but if you're getting that too high shell look, you got to take the underneath throw. How many times I even heard Tony Romo say, right, take the check down. And to your point, Brady, it's like Patrick Mahomes is just waiting for that big play down the field. You got to give what the defense is giving you, right? You got to take what the defense is giving you. And too many times he is pressing on the almost interception to Morig, right? That's just been a throwaway, Brady. You know this. You're back there scrambling for five or six yards, and now you're trying to throw it to a tight end working his way back. That's never a good throw. Just throw the ball away, live to play another down. Patrick Mahomes has not played at an elite level this year. And you talked about it. The run game has not been as consistent. And I, and with Pacheco coming back, I honestly thought that was something that they could do this week, right? Really lean on the run game. But they were not able to get the run game going. Also want to give a shout out to Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator for the, the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Did a really good job of mixing some things up. He picked, he picked and chose when to bring pressure to Patrick Mahomes. Then other times, stayed back in zone coverage. And a great job by that secondary, right? 
being disciplined because we know, Brady, once a quarterback starts to cram scramble, sometimes guys can get out of their zone coverage. But the Raiders did a masterful job, not only rushing up front with four, trying to make sure that Patrick Mahomes stayed in the pocket and they got after him, but that secondary, they did a good job of staying in their zone coverage, not getting out of coverage where Patrick Mahomes didn't have anywhere to go. But too many times the check down was there and Patrick Mahomes didn't take it. He was burping the baby, ended up getting some sacks, some, some inopportune throws that he had in the game. But they got to get back to trying to run the ball with Pacheco. But then also with Patrick Mahomes, whatever the defense is giving you, you have to take that. You cannot force the ball down the field. Him running around like this isn't sustainable. I mean, he's going to get yeah. himself hurt at some point in time. He's taking too many hits. You know, when you get rolled up on, you get kind of thrown around like that when you're scrambling around. Eventually, bad things end up happening. So mm. he's got to start protecting himself, too, and getting that ball out of his hand quicker. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier, Brady. He's trying to play hero ball almost, trying to make the big play happen. And, and look, you can't blame him because he almost has to. I mean, this offense is just devoid of having that big play ability. You see glimpses of it from Rasheed Rice, and he's kind of been the one that come on of late, but it's a lot of pressure to put on a rookie. And then all the other additions they've made to this roster, no one's really stepped up to re replace what they're missing in Tyreek Hill. Last year, they got away with it. This year, it just doesn't really feel like they've got that same type of consistency or juice on the outside when they're not targeting Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey's doing the best he can, but he can only do so much too. So I think it's incredibly frustrating for Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes based on how this offense is operating right now. But by the way, it, it, we should Shouldn't, we should acknowledge the Chiefs defense is going to keep them in ball games. Sure, yeah, you know, exactly. If they can fix things offensively, this Chiefs team can win some football games because of their defense. That group's been phenomenal. Yeah. They were lights out, although because of the loss, they don't get enough credit. Yeah, and Brady, I literally was going to bring that up. Like, if you look at this, and I've been saying it all year long. This is a Chiefs team that's led by its defense. I know we're not accustomed to saying that because of Patrick Mahomes, and we're used to him putting up gaudy numbers, but that has not been the case this year, right? Let's put this into perspective, Brady and Haley. This Chiefs defense gave up six points and lost this game. Right, 14 came on the Raiders defense, scoring on defense. So you said it perfectly, Brady. Like this Chiefs defense, they're going to keep you in games as long as you don't turn it, turn the ball over and give up games like they did today. They have an opportunity to win games down the stretch and potentially even still have that AFC um, West crown and get that home playoff game. So Patrick Mahomes and his offense, they got to do something to fix the offense. But at this case in point, Brady, it's like lean on your defense, try to lean on the run game. Just don't lose games because like you said, Brady, that defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. Uh, I did want to talk about Travis Kelsey. He got his 900th career reception today. I know you talked about things not working right in the passing game, but he's at least the bright spot there on offense. Uh, to a degree. I mean, I, I don't think you, you'd <laughs> yeah. make that case right now based on how their offense has worked. I mean, he is the one guy they try to go to. He, he's giving it his all when he's out there. It's just he's got so much focus and attention on him because he is such a special player. And so those targets and those catches have been hard to come by. And, and even in the creative pieces, the things that they do with the, in the offense, you know, Pacheco was the guy who came back, obviously scored the touchdown on the fake reverse to Mahomes and ended up running it in. He was the guy who played quarterback on the botched exchange. I mean, they're looking at other pieces to try to find other ways of getting defenses to focus on anyone else. And Pacheco's probably their most next most explosive player, but got kneed in the head, got knocked out at the end of this game. Yeah. And, and he really didn't have much of an impact either with the way the offensive line was playing. So, it, look, he, he's a Hall of Famer. Everyone knows that. He's one of the greatest tight ends to ever do it. Maybe, maybe the best when it's all said and done. But this is not the type of year where you're looking at a lot of those accolades that he's been able to make right now and walk away feeling really good about it. Yeah, Brady, it's been a struggle for Travis Kelsey. If you talk about five straight games not getting into the end zone, and we know that Andy Reid draws up plays for Travis Kelsey in the red zone. I've been saying this for a while, Brady. I would love to hear what you think about this. I think the Chiefs need to go more 12-13 personnel, right? One back, two tight ends, even three tight ends, because it seems like Patrick Mahomes has had some success throwing the ball down the seam when they do that, because you know this as a quarterback. When you go heavier set personnel, the defense has to match up, because they got to respect that you're going to run the football out of that personnel group. So I think they should go more 12 and 13. And then also one guy that Patrick Mahomes seems to to have some continuity with Justin Watson right he's the one that had that second touchdown catch I think they need to get him a little bit more involved in the offense we've seen Rasheed Rice come on the last couple weeks but I think Justin Watson needs to be the the bona fide number two receiver because it seems like Patrick Mahomes has more trust in him than any other receiver you know it's kind of interesting too because I believe that was who he was targeting on the pick six the problem with Watson is I don't think he scares anyone if you look at Jack Jones I mean he's yeah. playing soft on him they tried to run a little pivot route as Mahomes was, was rolling out to his 
right, and, and he never really had to give it much attention. He has had his eyes on Mahomes the whole time because he was never threatened to get beat downfield. That's the one yeah. thing that I think you keep seeing show up is they don't have the elite speed that they had with Tyree Kill. And I know we feel like we're beating a dead horse and talking about it, but that's one of the things that made a lot of these plays work. When you look at the, the success of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs and how they were able to you know, create these big plays, a lot of them were off-script plays where he would scramble around, mm -hmm. and you can only cover that sort of speed for so long. That's not the case now with this group. The longer Patrick Mahomes scrambles around, it's almost like there's a better chance of getting a holding call from the offensive line or he's going to get hit or sacked because no one's uncovering downfield. And that's a tough spot to be in as a quarterback. Yeah, it's certainly just like I said at the top of this. It's not what we're used to seeing out of this Kansas City Chiefs team. They've got a couple more weeks to figure it out before the postseason. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's take a look here. The NFL continues on CBS. You can always tap in each week with our guys and gals up in the booth and down on the field. Several big games as the season continues to roll along.